Everyone, need your attention, please. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. I just got a message saying that there's a problem with my computer. Yes, ma'am, we got this. Sir. This is much bigger than a little fishing scam. Honey? It's flammable as fuck. Who knew? At the beginning of the movie, we see a retired school teacher, Eloise Parker, living by herself in Massachusetts. She has a tenant in her barn, Adam Clay, who lives a quiet life as a beekeeper. Later, Eloise receives a warning on her computer that her hard drive is infected, prompting her to call the given number to avoid a complete loss of data. Her call gets connected to Boyd, who claims he is from the United Data Group. Eloise informs him about the warning, to which he assures her that the message is from their antivirus software, and it's part of the software package that she pre-installed on her computer. He advises her to uninstall the older version and install the latest one. However, when Eloise mentions she isn't tech-savvy, Boyd suggests her to download software that would allow him to reinstall remotely. Eloise agrees and follows the instructions, and Boyd gains remote access to her computer, exposing her account details to his team and instructing them on executing the scam. Boyd, acknowledging the inconvenience, offers to credit Eloise's subscription fees. He informs her of a $500 credit and asks her to check the account for transactions. But when Eloise checks it, she discovers a $50,000 credit instead of $500. Panicking, Boyd admits his grave error, expressing concern about potential job loss and mentioning his children. Eloise, not wanting him to face repercussions, offers to wire the excess amount back. But as she enters the master password, her laptop shuts down and Boyd proceeds to clear her entire account. Upon restarting her laptop, Eloise is shocked to find that all the money from her account has vanished, and almost simultaneously, she receives fraud detection notifications from her bank, adding to her distress. That night, Adam arrives at Eloise's house for dinner as invited, but he notices something wrong and grabs a knife from the kitchen. However, Eloise's daughter FBI agent Verona points a gun at him and asks him to kneel. She asks him who he is and what he is doing in her mother's house, but Adam says sorry to her, and just then Verona is shocked to see her mom's lifeless body there. Verona, skeptical of the suicide explanation given by the agents, decides to question Adam. He explains that he rented space in the barn from Eloise. When asked about his presence in the house, Adam reveals that Eloise didn't respond when he knocked, and concerned by the sound of a smoke alarm and noticing her car in the driveway, he entered to investigate. Later, while checking Eloise's computer, Verona discovers that her accounts are empty, and she realizes her mom has been scammed. Now Adam is released the next morning because the fingerprints on the gun were not his, but Eloise's. Verona later apologizes to Adam for the previous night, and to which he says it's understandable. She invites him to her house and expresses gratitude for looking after her mom. Verona shares that she believes her mother liked him because he reminds her of her brother, a marine raider, who was killed a few years ago. She then discloses that her mother was scammed, resulting in the emptying of all her accounts. When he asks if she knows who did this, Verona reveals that the crew responsible has been operating for two years without identifiable names. She adds that even if they did, a defense attorney would just argue that the elderly victim agreed to wire a stranger his entire life savings. Adam comments that when someone hurts a child, there are parents. People who care are ready to step in. But when someone hurts an older person, sometimes they are left to face the hornets alone because either it goes unnoticed or no one cares. Verona says she cares and she is stubborn, so she's going to get whoever did this. Adam gets up saying he needs to take care of the hive and leaves, taking the jar of honey he had brought for Eloise. Adam retrieves a satellite phone from one of the beehive boxes and contacts a woman, requesting a favor to obtain a name and address. Later, the woman contacts him and informs him that they are routing worldwide, but she found the address. Adam arrives at the United Data Group building, and despite the security trying to stop him, he insists on going inside to set it on fire. When the security guard attempts to prevent him from entering, Adam confronts them, questioning if they are aware they work for scammers exploiting the vulnerable in society. 
He then knocks them down when they try to attack him, enters the building, and instructs the receptionist to notify other companies to evacuate immediately, as there is going to be a fire. Adam enters the call center, demanding the employees repeat a pledge that they will never steal from the weak and vulnerable again. But when they don't take him seriously, Adam starts beating one of them, seeing which the others get scared and repeat what he says. He then proceeds to pour gasoline into the call center, and when Boyd asks him what is he doing, Adam says he's a beekeeper, and he protects the hive, and sometimes he uses fire to smoke out hornets. Boyd orders his security guards to stop him, but Adam knocks them all in a matter of moments, after which he tells Boyd that the next call from his fishing scam to this call center will make a spark across these wires, and given all of the gasoline fumes in here, anything alive in here won't be. After a while, a man calls the number, leading to a spark that ignites a powerful explosion ultimately destroying the building. Later, Boyd informs his boss, Derek Danforth, about the incident that a man destroyed their building, resulting in four casualties. Shocked, Derek demands the name of that man, but Boyd explains that he doesn't have it, and that all the cameras and drives were destroyed in the fire. Derek seeks help from former CIA director Wallace Westwild to find the man, but he says this sounds like a job for the police, and he can't help him. Derek calls Boyd back, providing credentials and instructing him to log into their cloud to investigate anyone connected to recent deals. Boyd asks, what if he finds this guy? To which Derek coldly orders him to assemble a wrecking crew to kill him. Meanwhile, Verona meets her partner Matt outside the United Data Group building and he informs her that the receptionist witnessed a muscular man in his 40s manhandling security and entering the building with gas cans. On the other hand, Boyd follows Adam to his beehives with a group of goons and commands them to destroy the hives. Subsequently, they proceed to the barn with the intention of killing Adam. However, Adam skillfully takes them down one by one, and in an intense confrontation, he mutilates Garnett by cutting off his fingers but decides not to kill him, leaving him incapacitated. Later, Verona receives news about the fire at her mother's house and discovers that the deceased individuals in the fire were employed by the United Data Group. Matt inquires if there's a possibility that the person who burned down the United Data Group is the same individual renting the spot from her mother. Meanwhile, Boyd contacts Derek and reports that the man severed the fingers on his right hand. Derek asks him who the man is, to which Boyd says he doesn't know, but he is a beekeeper. Suddenly, Adam punches Boyd, pulls him out of his car, and ties him with a tow strap. Subsequently, Adam goes to his truck and accelerates it, causing Boyd to fall off a bridge with the truck to his demise. He then talks to Derek and warns him that he is coming after him. Derek informs Wallace about this, but Wallace says if a beekeeper says he is going to die, he is going to die. There is nothing he can do or anybody else to stop it, and when Derek asks him what good is he, Wallace explains that he did 35 years of loyal government service, culminating as director of the world's premier intelligence agency. He could have done anything, but he chose this job as a favor to her mother, safeguarding Danforth Enterprises, her reputation, and her name. Derek asks him to just tell him what this guy is, to which Wallace says he is probably the last pair of eyes that he is going to sneer at. The scene shifts to the FBI field office, where Verona tells Matt that the individuals from United Data Group were scammers, led by a known mob associate Boyd. She suspects that United Data Group is just one of many call centers, so there's got to be a central office that's controlling all of them, and that's what they got to find. She then inquires about Adam, and Matt describes him as a ghost with only a birth certificate and a social security number. Just then, a call comes in prompting him to urge Verona to leave as they've located Boyd. Meanwhile, Derek's mom Jessica calls Wallace and tells him that she has never seen Derek this scared. She offers him a board seat in the holding company, to which Wallace says he doesn't need that and gives her his words to protect Derek. Wallace contacts CIA director Janet, seeking assistance and revealing that Jessica's son has drawn the unwanted attention of a beekeeper. That night, Janet calls him back and informs him that his problem is retired from the program. The current active beekeeper is aware of the issue and is going to be taking things from here. However, Wallace expresses concern, stating that the current beekeeper is a lunatic who should have been removed months ago. Later, the current beekeeper launches an attack on Adam, intending to kill him. 
However, he manages to escape, and when local police arrive at the scene, she shoots them as well. Seizing the opportunity, Adam engages in a fight with her, managing to kick her back, and as she attempts to shoot him, he mysteriously disappears. Frustrated, she climbs onto her truck and starts demolishing a gas station with a machine gun. And in the chaos, Adam hits her, knocking her down with a honey jar. He then sets her on fire, causing her to fall from her car and meet her demise. Adam then approaches her lifeless body, cuts off one of her fingers, and as he departs, the gas station explodes. Janet calls Wallace and informs him that the problem has not been solved. The beekeepers have studied the situation and decided to remain neutral. So now he is on his own. The next day, Verona and Matt arrive at the gas station, and a detective informs them that the vehicle is registered to Anisette Landris. Verona asks Matt if he knows who Anisette is, and he replies that she is someone who doesn't exist in any commercial or government database, much like Adam. Verona finds a book in the car and says here is another reason that Anisette Landris is like Adam. Meanwhile, Wallace coordinates a group of ex-Special Forces personnel, revealing to them that there are programs even he wasn't privy to, like the beekeepers. Someone a long time ago decided that a mechanism outside the system was needed to keep their nation safe, and its one mission is to keep the system safe. Beekeepers are a highly skilled and dangerous clandestine organization tasked with protecting the United States, operating above and beyond governmental jurisdiction. But now it appears that a retired beekeeper has gone off the program and is acting in what he mistakenly believes is the hive's best interest. Meanwhile, Adam gains access to the beehive facility using Annie Set's severed finger, secures the necessary items, and collects crucial information. On the other hand, Deputy Director Prigg and Special Counsel Amanda Munoz meet Verona and Matt. Verona briefs them, stating their belief that three significant crime scenes in the area are linked to a single individual Adam Clay. Connecting the nature of his alias, they suspect Adam is tied to a classified program named Beekeeper. They perceive him as highly capable and motivated on a trajectory toward Boston, with Nine Star United being his next potential target. This company operates regional call centers, similar to the one Adam burned down. Craig asks her, why is Adam on this rampage? To which she says, he is protecting the hive. Prague gets up and says they will receive all the support they ask for. Later, the SWAT team arrives at the Nine Star United building, but ex-Special Forces operatives, acting on Wallace's orders, are already present, and Petties, their leader, instructs the SWAT team to leave. As the SWAT team establishes a perimeter outside the building, Petties and his team enter the call center, directing the manager to shut it down. Outside, Adam swiftly takes down and defeats the SWAT team, and by taking one of them hostage, he gains entry into the building. Meanwhile, the manager contacts Derek, informing him about Petties, and Derek instructs Petties not to interfere with his business and to focus solely on completing the assigned task, prompting Petties to order his men to set a parameter outside. As they depart, one of them is startled to see Adam among them, and as he attempts to flee, Adam throws him onto a table. He then warns the others that those who wish to avoid harm can leave, but the manager insists that anyone attempting to move will be fired. Pettis arrives with his team and initiates gunfire, but Adam skillfully evades their attacks, and when the team pursues him, he systematically eliminates them one by one. Eventually, he confronts Pettis, engaging in a fierce fight, and after a challenging battle, he succeeds in knocking Pettis down as well. Verona and Matt arrive, and a man informs Verona that Adam is inside the building. Opting not to wait for backup, Verona heads into the building. Meanwhile, Adam confronts the manager, who pleads for mercy, but disregarding the plea, Adam grabs and tosses him aside. He then picks him up and demands to know where the money is going, and when the manager refuses to cooperate, Adam begins torturing him for information. He then sits in front of the manager and displaying Eloise's photo tells him that she was an educator and a mother who dedicated her life to helping people. He tells him that she took her own life because he embezzled two million dollars from a charity she managed. He emphasizes that she was the only person who ever cared for him. The manager discloses the organization he works for, claiming they are untouchable. However, Adam says nobody is untouchable and that sometimes when the hive is out of balance, you have to replace the queen. 
Just then, Verona arrives, and Adam informs her that the man is directly responsible for her mother's death. Verona says she believes him, but insists there are laws to handle such matters. Adam manages to escape from there, and attacks and knocks down Matt. Matt pleads for mercy, revealing he has four kids, to which Adam says he knows and leaves after disassembling the gun. Later, Verona and Matt also gets shocked to know who is behind this scam. Meanwhile, Wallace learns that his team is dead, and he suggests to Derek that it's time to call her mother, as Adam can't make his move on them if they are in her proximity. Derek calls his mom and informs her that he wants to see her this weekend. She agrees and instructs her assistant Kelly to help keep him sober. And in a surprising revelation, it's unveiled that Jessica is the President of the United States. Later, in a meeting with Director Prigg, Verona tells him that they think Adam seems to be following the money. The money from people with no heirs, no family. She explains that Nine Star United employs data mining software to identify these individuals and subsequently target their assets. Verona reveals the involvement of another company, one that serves as a vendor to the intelligence community and the Justice Department. And in fact, the software is used in their very office to identify financial fraud. Prig asks her about the company name, to which she reveals Danforth Enterprises' name, founded and operated by Jessica Danforth, who recently stepped down because she was sworn in as President of the United States. Their concern is that not only will Clay attempt to kill Derek, but he may also kill Jessica due to her association with the scam. They both then reach the president's beachside mansion, where the Secret Service is already deployed. Wallace has also hired a group of mercenaries for extra protection, one of whom named Lazarus previously had an encounter with a beekeeper and lost his leg. After some time, Jessica also reaches there and asks Wallace what's going on. Meanwhile, Adam reaches there by hiding under a truck in a security service uniform, and when an agent goes to check, Adam attacks him and takes his place and gets along with the rest of the team. Following this, Adam changes into a different outfit and attends the party. Meanwhile, Jessica introduces Derek to Prig, who inquires if Derek is familiar with United Data Group and Nine Star United, to which Derek confirms his investments. Prig then asks him what he knows about a classified algorithmic data mining software package developed by the intelligence community. On the other hand, Verona sees Adam, and she immediately alerts the SWAT team. After some time, Verona and the mercenaries find Adam, and they ask him to kneel down. As Lazarus prepares to shoot him, Adam presses a button on a remote, triggering an explosion in a vehicle. And seizing the opportunity, Adam grabs Lazarus's gun, eliminates the mercenaries, and makes a quick escape. Meanwhile, Jessica tells Derek that he broke the rules and corrupted an imperfect but functioning system. Derek says he was just trying to help her, to which she says they were already rich as his father built an empire. Jessica decides that she will tell the beekeeper the truth about what he did, and then she is telling the entire nation. On the other hand, Wallace encounters Adam and tries to stop him from entering Jessica's office. But Adam says it's personal, breaks his fingers, and pushes him away. Meanwhile, Derek kills Prig. And just then, the door blasts open, and when Adam enters, Derek takes his mother hostage. Verona and Matt also reach there and she asks him to put down his weapon. Adam says, you decide who you work for, for the law or for justice. Derek attempts to kill his mother, but Clay kills him first and escapes through a nearby window. Despite Verona having a clear shot, she decides not to shoot Clay, and he flees with the aid of the scuba gear he had hidden on the beach. 